in the 19th century, we, the daughters of the revolutionary heroes of 76, demand at your hands the redress of our grievances, a revision of your state constitution, a new code of laws. Permit us then, as briefly as possible, to call your attention to the legal disabilities under which we labor. First, look at the position of woman as woman. It is not enough for us that by your laws we are permitted to live and breathe, to claim the necessaries of life from our legal protectors, to pay the penalty of our crimes. We demand the full recognition of all our rights as citizens of the Empire State. We are persons, native, free-born citizens, property holders, taxpayers. Yet, are we denied the exercise of our right to the effective franchise? We support ourselves and, in part, your schools, colleges, churches, your poor houses, jails, prisons, the army, the navy, the whole machinery of government, and yet we have no voice in your councils. We have every qualification required by the Constitution, necessary to the legal voter, but the one of sex. We are moral, virtuous, and intelligent, and in all respects, quite equal to the proud white man himself. And yet, by your laws, we are classed with idiots, lunatics, and Negroes, and though we do not feel honored by the place assigned us, yet, in fact, our legal position is lower than that of either for the Negro can be raised to the dignity of a voter if he possess himself of $250, the lunatic can vote in his moments of sanity, and the idiot too, if he be a male, one and not more than nine-tenths a fool, but we who have guided great movements of charity, established missions, edited journals, published works on history, economy, and statistics, who have governed nations, led armies, filled the professors, clear, taught philosophy and mathematics to the savants of our age, discovered planets, piloted ships across the sea, are denied the most sacred rights of citizens because, forsooth, we came in, not into this republic crowned with the dignity of manhood. Can it be that here, where we acknowledge no royal blood, no apostolic descent, that you, who have declared that all men were created equal, that governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed, would willingly build up an aristocracy that places the ignorant and vulgar above the educated and refined, the alien and the ditch digger above the authors and poets of the day, an aristocracy that would raise the sons above the mothers that bore them? Second, Look at the position of woman as wife. Your laws relating to marriage, founded as they are on the old common law of England, a compound of barbarous usages, but partially modified by progressive civilization, are in open violation of our enlightened ideas of justice and of the holiest feelings of our nature. If you take the highest view of marriage as a divine relation which, bore, which love alone can constitute and sanctify, then of course human legislation can only recognize it. Men can neither bind nor loose its ties, for that prerogative belongs to God alone, who makes man and woman and the laws of attraction by which they are united. But if you regard marriage as a civil contract, then let it be subject to the same laws which control all other contracts. Do not make it a kind of half-human, half-divine institution which you may build up but cannot regulate. Do not, by your special legislation for this one kind of contract, involve yourselves in the grossest absurdities and contradictions. So long as by your laws no man can make a contract for a horse or piece of land until he is 21 years of age, and by which contract he is not bound if any deception has been practiced or if the party contracting has not fulfilled his part of the agreement, 
so long as the parties in all mere civil contracts retain their identity and all the power and independence they had before contracting with the full right to dissolve all partnerships and contracts for any reason at the will and option of the parties themselves, upon what principle of civil jurisprudence do you permit the boy of 14 and the girl of 12 in violation of every natural law to make a contract more momentous in importance than any other and then hold them to it, come what may, the whole or their natural lives in spite of disappointment, deception, and misery. It's a little tough. Too tough? Not too tough, just... 140. 